you're going to meet a tattoo artist named Mark Michael Kilpatrick, who is basically at this point, at the very beginning of the story, going mad. And so I try to uh, basically hook, I guess, a reader into his madness right from the beginning to make it something you could possibly feel or imagine uh, in a weird way, rather than just depicting him killing people, which is what the rest of the book does. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no one fucking understands art anymore. The thought wavered, each syllable taking liquid form and substance, a volcanic pulsing anger of language that seethed and writhed and boiled inside his skull until the brittle bones shattered as his cranium exploded. His mind began to ooze out and trail down his flesh, etching pain down his arms, his legs, pooling at his feet, filling the room till he was drowning, suffocating on his own thoughts and feelings, all lava in his lungs. He mathematically tried to swim out, but the floor held him down as the liquid bubbled and hardened, melting him into it. He was it, and it was him, and he, it, was what? Mark Michael Kilpatrick thought he was dead. A blinding flash of light filled his eyes, stars in the sockets, fire in his brain, no breathing room, no blood. And as fast as it started, it ended like the momentary darkness in the blink of the eyes. Kilpatrick was standing inside of his head, which had been turned inside out to accompany him. His skull had expanded to fill the entire room, wallpapering its walls with creviced ivory bones. The wormy curls of his yellow brain had engulfed his entire body, becoming a maze of gray matter that he could step through, dark thresholds of ideas and experiences he could visit and toy with, change and transfer. He looked down at his body, completely naked and hairless, but the tattoos he had gathered over the years remained inked deeply and darkly into his skin. A large rod of pink flesh trailed down from where his belly button should have been, a hard, bony umbilicus that scraped the floor beneath him like a bumper car electrode. It was electric, all of it, electric and alive, a carnival of his mind. And it was hot. He took a step forward, and the wet muck beneath his feet spattered like stove grease. But the heat felt good. Joyously, Kilpatrick dove into the air, twisting like a gymnast and landing on his back. He let the hilly maze of his brain transport him through his life experiences, his past life, hazy memories come alive, remembrances from womb to school to work, work. Most of the memories were the same, Kilpatrick in his garage, his makeshift tattoo shop, inking the skin of indifferent clients for a pittance that hardly paid the bills. But it wasn't the money that mattered. Money was dead paper, worthless. The tattoo, the living, breathing art embedded in human skin, was the only thing that drove him. He poured his heart into hundreds of skins, creating masterpieces that would make Rembrandt jealous. Even if someone wanted a plain old skull tattooed on their arm, Kilpatrick had a million ways of looking at a skull, and each was a genuine original vision, a glimpse of the world as he saw it, that deserved to be carried around on the flesh, to share and enlighten the ignorant. Watching his creation of tattoos long gone, Kilpatrick became enthralled. So much he had learned since the early days. So much innate talent stitched into the pores of his clients. But something else, <clears throat> something more elusive about these memories, some constant recurrent theme underpinning each tattoo. And then he realized what it was, indifference. None of the people whose flesh he had graced with his talent were pure art lovers. None appreciated his work. <coughs> There were men who got a tattoo to get chicks, or to look tough, or to join a gang, but none really cared about the essence of the art piece. There were women who got tattooed for the same reason, but none understood the true nuances of Kilpatrick's creations, and none really cared. No one cared. Anger returned, and Kilpatrick wanted this visit of his life to be over and done with. Hell, he wanted his whole life to be done with. Visiting his past made him realize that it had all been a worthless farce, a catering to the petty needs of others. Payback had once been the creation itself, but that was no longer enough. He forced himself to the end of this trial. Visions rushed past his eyes in a blur, and then suddenly the ride came to an end, a dead end. 